Hello everybody, you have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of Making a Murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. Hello everybody, we're back here again to talk a little bit about... We're going to talk about two lawyers from... Two attorneys from Wisconsin that did harm to Brendan... And, well, not physical harm. If you don't see it, uh, putting a 16-year-old in prison, an innocent 16-year-old in prison as harm, then, I don't know, you maybe need to find another definition. Uh, but anyways, it's, it's so to me, it's two Wisconsin attorneys who, who happened to both do Brendan great harm. It's interesting to me that, that we have Ken Kratz, who, after the whole Avery trial and everything, ended up getting you know, in trouble for inappropriate sexting, inappropriate behavior, and potential forceful sex uh, with um, victims of domestic violence, you know, ladies he was supposed to be helping. So, yeah. So, that happened with Kratz, who was the prosecutor in Avery and Dassey cases. And then we have now Len Kaczynski, who's been brought up on charges of harassment and two misdemeanor uh, counts of violating a harassment restraining order. It's funny how, you know, these, these two attorneys have, like, have or had this attitude like they were above everything. Because that's kind of the impression I get looking at Len Kaczynski here. I mean, what was he doing? I mean... This, this woman thought he was meowing at her. He's claiming it was a toy. A little cat toy that, that he... That would meow. And... Like, that makes it any better. I mean, the fact that you're a grown man... And you carry... You're a judge and you carry around a little toy cat... To meow? Well, it says something about your character, my friend. Uh, yeah. That's... You're a grown man. I mean... If you're a kid on the playground carrying around a little meowing cat, well, you're a kid on the playground, but you're not. You're a judge. So, it's it's peculiar, bizarre, and, yeah, plenty plenty weird. So, you know, that's the, that's, you know, to me it's odd that we have these two, it's two Wisconsin attorneys, both that happened to, in my mind, do great harm to Brendan Dassey, who is, in my mind, 100% innocent. There is like not a shadow of doubt in my mind of his innocence, and uh, yeah, I mean, and it's obvious. It's very obvious. Brennan didn't get denied relief because there wasn't anybody out there that felt that he warranted that that relief. The problem here was they were bound by a piece of legislation, AEDPA. That's why Brennan's confession didn't get overturned. Because AEDPA has made it so impossible for for the the federal courts to try and and keep the state courts honest and be able to overturn you know you know th these things like well for instance juvenile confessions and those of limited juveniles the, the confessions of limited juveniles this was a matter that needed to be addressed and it. I mean, it started out, boom, boom, two wins for Brendan, you know, and then suddenly Brad Schimmel, like, does the Hail Mary, I'm calling for an on-bank review, and he gets it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Brendan wins twice, and, and then he gets that. When you think about it with Brendan's case, eight federal judges weighed in, reviewed and weighed in on his case. There were seven total at on-bank three of which were on the three-judge panel, but anyway, seven judges there. And then we have Magistrate Duffin, the original judge that granted Brendan relief. So that's eight, and they were split. Even with AEDPA, they were split four to four. So AEDPA almost didn't get in the way for Brendan. So hopefully in the future, you know, if we keep talking about Brendan and we keep talking about other cases like Brendan's and we make an awareness out there for, you know, so that people become aware of it. 
you know, just, you know, not, I mean, not everybody's out there looking for this kind of stuff. They're not out there digging for this kind of stuff. And hopefully if there's just enough stuff canvassing, you know, everywhere, then, you know, they'll have a, they'll, they'll eventually see something somewhere that will kind of, you know, maybe permeate their subconscious mind and get them thinking maybe at some point in the future. But in, to my mind, it, it, creating awareness that 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 these limited mentally limited juveniles and what they are you know what is happening to them in our justice system like real things that are happening right i think when when reality is is shown to people and you know like i try to do here in my videos with the court documents with the facts with the things like that so that people can look at it and be reasonably sure that you know what they're seeing and hearing is accurate or fairly accurate you know I, obviously court even courts aren't perfect but but basically they have a process of collecting facts that you know allows people to have faith in the findings basically so so that's why i try to focus on those things and and, and that's what we're going to have to do moving forward and i say we because i know there's a lot of people out there that are very active on twitter you know there's a lot of people out there that are very active on facebook you know various platforms um you know, not everybody's doing YouTube videos like me or some of the other ones out, you know, some of the other people out there that are doing YouTube videos. Not everybody's, you know, doing videos like us, but there are a lot of people out there creating awareness on Twitter, on Facebook, on wherever they are. So, and that's what people need to do. And, and if I might suggest, it would be good if everybody considers every once in a while doing a Brendan or Steven post on their, on their T timeline on your timeline um, the reason why I say that is to break out of the MAM bubble you know yeah it's easy to sit in your own little in your own little echo chamber with everybody that feels the same way you do but the trick is is that is, is getting out and reaching people outside of that bubble and so the so that the more people come to the flock that, that, that start to look at it and see it for what it is and, and you know the, the travesty that it is so that's really my main goal and I would encourage everybody out there to do that that's why I took this chance to as soon as I saw that Len Kaczynski had been charged I was like perfect perfect example you know of, of you know uh, with two Wisconsin attorneys Kratz and and you know Lechin Kaczynski uh, kind of similar behavior now look now Kaczynski was only harassing um, and it wasn't a victim of domestic violence of course but I mean still the the fact that he thought saying it was a cat's toy would 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 make it all okay like no big deal <laughs> I kind of think he's being like he just feels like you know like none of this will ever stick like he's just being smug that's kind of the way that that comes off in my mind so Anyway, let me go ahead and show you a little bit of the article, what was going on with uh, with with uh, Mr. Kaczynski here. Uh, and you can see he got charged uh, and some of the specifics uh, of, of what's going on here. So, let's see it. Fox Crossing, Wisconsin. Municipal Judge Len Kaczynski finds himself on the other side of the bench and he's charged with a felony count of stalking and two misdemeanor counts of violating a harassment restraining order. The Winnebago County District Attorney filed the charges Wednesday and a summons was issued for Kaczynski to make his initial appearance on August 6th. If convicted, the charges can total five years behind bars. Kaczynski's court clerk claims he's been harassing her since April of 2017, then reta retaliated against her to the point of serving her with termination papers in March and describing knowledge about where her extended relatives live. According to the criminal complaint, the clerk says Kaczynski's behavior came, became increasingly bizarre after he returned to work after a long illness, asking her to join in photographs for his daughter, knowing that her mother visited because of her Facebook location, and one time staring at her and making cat noises for 45 minutes. She says... After she asked him to keep their relationship professional, he would request meetings, but then only discuss personal matters. So, that's pretty bizarre. 45 minutes he sat there with that uh, cat toy, right? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, 
that's just really uh, bizarre. Uh, I really feel bad for this court clerk that had to endure this from him. It's absolutely, you know, ridiculous uh, what he's what he's been doing here, and that goofy smile he has when he's in his orange jumpsuit taking his like mug shot or whatever is just. He's a smug, smug guy, and I, you know, hope he doesn't end up being able to wiggle his way out of it. So, Len Kaczynski is formally charged with harassment and two misdemeanor charges of violating a harassment straining order. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, I just find it interesting, the parallel between two attorneys here, two Wisconsin attorneys, that uh, were engaging in some very highly questionable behavior with females um, and both of them happened to to be on the side of doing harm to Brendan Dassey um, yeah I mean it's I mean it, it's maybe a coincidence but the point is Lynn Kaczynski is still disgracing himself even more than he has with in Brendan's case he's now piling on with even more disgrace proving that he's you know he was always a questionable character what matters to him I think is his prestige and everything that's why he was so desperate to become a judge probably so that he could bully around his clerks that's a guess I don't have proof but if he's acting like this with one clerk how many others are there that never came forward I wonder so, anyways, that's about it for this video, folks. If you, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you.